Welcome back. This is Dreadius with another episode. Wait, what? This is not a part of a series. This is a one-off episode. What I'm going to be doing now is I will just show you the teams that I'm thinking about covering um, in the post-draft franchise series. There's a vote uh, currently up. Uh, you can take a look at that and just dump your vote in there. Um, I just want to show you the teams and their current uh, current uh, team setups um, that I would like to cover. Uh, the first team is, uh, of course, uh, one of my favorite teams, the Los Angeles Rams. And as you can see, they are really, really thinned out at the moment. This would be a very challenging uh, franchise series. <clears throat> they do have those three quarterbacks, but the starting quarterback is Matt Stafford with a 74 rating really really bad went down quite a bit now we've got that running back room which is actually looking good uh no fullback currently <laughs> the wide receiver room uh with cooper cup and apart from that a rob and van jefferson are looking good two to atwell ben scovrona lamb lance mccutcheon jacob harris quite a few players here that we could probably work with uh but you know the quality is not here as as you all know uh after this really hard exodus tight end tyler higby i'm uh, really ex uh, not looking forward to what will happen with him but i could uh, and really uh, see the rams releasing him as well we've got hunter long here uh who was a part of a trade from the dolphins uh, i like him though bryson hopkins this is the tight end room left tackle room looking horrible but uh, that is just the way things are at the moment just going to be clicking through this slowly you can take in the players basically the challenge here would be that we just have a lot of really really low level players we will have a very very um uh, big problem with the salary cap um and we would really have to juggle players left and right the the appeal of this franchise series of course would be to sort of get all of this under control uh work with the players that we have and rebuild the team through yeah through the draft uh, through the later stages in the 2023 draft uh we'll have to see what the rams front office does there and then heading into the 2024 season just you know moving along at a leisurely pace right there a lot of players in here uh with absolutely no quality or very very low ceiling as well but overall, I think this would be a big challenge. Really like a lot of the players in here. I think the ratings are brutal, but that is just the difference between real life and that. Um, the quarterback room, definitely uh, one that might develop at some point in time. The free safeties um, uh, and the strong safety, with basically Jordan Fuller being the only really good uh, safety here. Uh, the kicker is Justin Wasser and the punter is Cameron. Zialek, whatever that dude is, I have never heard of him before. Uh, so that is the LA Rams team. Uh, the next team that I put up there were the uh, Minnesota Vikings. <clears throat> they are also a challenging team. I never really picked those before in, in a franchise series. Of course, they are less challenging than the, uh, than the Rams, simply because they have a lot of pieces in place. They've got a solid quarterback to start out with. The running back room is really well, uh, well staffed. We've got the fullback there. Uh, the wide receiver room is also pretty well set. Justin Jefferson and then young players here that they brought in, young players that we can't develop. Um, the, the tight end room led by TJ Hawkinson. Josh Oliver just uh, recently joined here. Um, just a lot of good players that we can work with a lot of dead cap as well but uh, we'll just have to cut that loose at some point in time the offensive line not looking too horrible i have to say uh definitely players in here that we can work with that we can move around and uh, that, that i just really feel like uh, like we could improve this line pretty quickly uh, to be very very solid uh, on the defensive side of things same picture we've got very solid players harrison phillips for instance uh the edge right edge it's uh, certainly a little bit of a question mark here but uh for the most part players in here that we can use either young or developmental d tackle positions and <clears throat> also looking very nice uh in air quotes of course pretty bad but for instance james lynch would be a player that we could develop here uh the linebacker room daniel hunter superstars in a dj wanham 
Uh, Jordan Hicks at mid linebacker is the highest ranked Brian Asamoah. So you can see that there's quite a few players in here that we could really work with. Um, there's the superstars, there's the veterans, a lot of different types of players in here. So this could be quite an interesting one. And I'm especially interested to see what they do on the uh, draft front, who they go for, um, and, and yeah, what, what that will mean for the club, of course. But this is one they've already done a lot of work. Uh, this, I would say, is moderately challenging. I don't see the big challenge in this one uh, because they just have so many solid players that you can work with. Um, so that's the picture for the Vikings. The other teams that I uh, sort of put out there, one of those uh, were the Patriots. There we go. Uh, similar picture to the Vikings. I have to say, never touched them before in a franchise or rebuild. Um, we've got Mac Jones here. Now we've got Bailey Zappi. So solid starting quarterback. Uh, the running back room shuffled a little bit uh, this offseason. But again, the players that we have here, I would say, are good players. It's a young room. We could definitely work with this. The fullback, we've got nobody. The wide receivers, Juju Smith, Schuster, Devonta Parker, certainly going to be solid to start out with Kendrick Bourne, uh, Tyquan Thornton, and so on. So th these teams are th your typical run-of-the-mill team, I would say. They've got good players. They've got bad players. They added Mike Kosicki now. They've got Hunter Henry. I'm really excited to see what they will do with these two here and how that will work. I'd like to reunite with Mike here. Uh, after starting out with him in the Dolphins franchise. Didn't really do uh, do it for me there, but uh, he might be really good in this setup here. Uh, the offensive line, we already can see that we have solid players in here, good starters and decent backups. Uh, we can definitely work with these and just start out quite, with, quite as solidly, actually. Um, of course, there's players and positions that we need to look at. For instance, this one here, Riley Rife. 33.72 rated. Yeah, not really too keen on that one, but I don't I don't care too much um, because we we can shuffle things around. There are options, and the draft is coming. Do we expect uh, the front office of the Patriots to fill some gaps here um, on defense? Similar picture. We've got interesting young players here that we can develop. We've got uh, older players that I would immediately cut, but there you go. Uh, we've got experienced veterans like Dietrich Weiss Jr. Um, the D tackle position is a little bit thin, if you ask me. The linebackers have the great Matt Juden in here. We also have younger players that we can work with um, in case of injuries. Mid linebacking room is filled to the absolute brim. A lot of um, practice squad players in here. Right outside linebacker, Josh Uchi and Demarcus Mitchell. Uh, quarterback room is looking solid. Again, the picture is the same. Uh, you can just look at the names and you see that there are super solid players in here that we can immediately use. And then there's players in here that we might need to develop, like for instance, Joshua Bledsoe, for instance. Um, strong safety, Carl Duggar, Adrian Phillips, uh, Cody Davis and Brenton Schooler. The picture just is the same across the board. I don't know if this would be super exciting or if this would be uh, challenging. Currently, this is the one that's in the lead. We have uh, kicker and a punter here as well so those are uh, the patriots i would say to wrap it up moderately challenging um we we are starting from a very very good position already don't really see too many question marks surrounding this team here and the final team that's up for grabs uh, are the san francisco 49ers um that are starting out with i think the most interesting part is the quarterback question of course because i personally would be going with brock purdy um, Sam Darnold, is, yeah, he's there as well, but he's a good backup. And Trey Lance, I don't know. So it's between Lance and Purdy. This would be part of the storyline here, of course, and how, how they develop. I'm not really going into this with a predetermination. I would really uh, put it down to how they develop and how things play out here. Uh, the running back room is superb, of course. Christian McCaffrey, Elijah Mitchell, and then we've got good backup players in here that are young as well. Fantastic fullback. Uh, the wide receiver room is really stacked. Uh, we've got very good players that will be moving up uh, and, uh, and developing here. Um, the tight end room, fantastic. George Kittle, one of the best tight ends in the game currently. Um, the backups are just backups, nothing more than that, but it really doesn't matter too much um, when you start out with a fantastic starter. 
Uh, the offensive line, again, you can see Trent Williams here grinning, John Feliciano as the best left guard, but we've got Aaron Banks who's 24-73. So again, we can do some shuffling here. Uh, the center is solid, I would say, for the moment. Right guard, good developmental player, um, and the right tackle. Same thing. We, well, this is probably the position where I would do something, probably dive into free agency or look to strengthen this um, post-draft. But I feel like this is also the position that the 49ers front office will focus on in the draft. Uh, on the defensive side of things, it is very similar. Young players that are that are going to be good developmental players, but we also have fantastic starters like Nick Bosa, for instance. Um, the D tackle room is absolutely fantastic. Javon Hargrave, Anarik Armstead, Javon Kinlaw, Kevin Givens, and so on and so forth. Um, the linebackers, we could work here. Uh, the mid linebacker, great Fred Warner, right out of the linebacker, Dre Greenlaw. So the, here and there, there are positions that we certainly would have to adapt. But when you look at the team overall, I can, I can say with a lot of certainty that this would not be the biggest challenge. Of course, there's parts that we need to improve. But when you just look at the team, Overall, this, I would also say, is probably the least challenging of all of the four teams. So uh, now that we did a quick walkthrough, just, uh, yeah, look at the poll, drop your vote in there. Really interested to see where this is going to go. I might even do a head-to-head -head from the two top-rated uh, top teams. And um, once we did that, there's nothing left to do than prepare for the draft, prepare after the draft, and then uh, we will just follow up on uh, this uh, on this episode basically with the first episode of the new franchise series that's going to be including all of the changes from the uh, draft in the 2023 season uh, or kicking off the 2023 season anyhow you know what i mean thank you so much for watching please drop your votes let me know what you think in the comments down below if you like what i'm doing drop me a like and subscribe it just means a lot to me and as always guys thank you so much for being here and see you next time.